Hey, what's going on, Ball Nerds? This is Ian Reynolds, Community Manager for BallNerd.com, and this is a video which is going to show you how to set the best settings for Diablo 3 running on a PC or Mac, and what settings you should use and why. Also, but first, we're going to talk about the default and minimum requirement settings for the game, at least recommended by Blizzard, and we'll go from there. So, the minimum requirements for a PC are fully updated Windows 7, Vista, or XP with at least DirectX 9. The use of an Intel Pentium D 2.8 GHz or AMD 64-bit uh, 4400 or better processor are the minimum requirements for at least your CPU. As far as GPU and graphics, pro graphics power, an NVIDIA GeForce 7800 GT or a comparable Radeon X 1950 Pro or better is recommended. 1 GB of RAM to 1.5 GB of RAM if you have Windows 7 or Vista is recommended and you need at least 12 GB of hard drive space to run this game. Of course if you have a DVD-ROM and you purchase a retail version of the, di of the game that, that comes on a disc you will need a DVD-ROM of course, this is an always online game, so you need a broadband internet connection, and you need video settings reaching a minimum resolution of 1024 by 768. We'll talk again a little bit about this later. Now for Macs. Mac OS X 10 68 or 1068 or version 10.7 is required, or of course a newer version. An Intel Core 2 Duo CPU or better an NVIDIA GeForce 6800 GTM or Radeon 2600 for GPU is required and 2 gigabytes of RAM, the same uh, amount of requirement for gigabyte hard drive space is, is also required, so it's 12, a DVD-ROM drive for the retail version of the disk, broadband internet connection of course, and the same for the video settings as well, the 1024 by 768. So the recommended requirements are actually a little bit higher, but really not all that much higher. So let's talk about PC. So a fully updated Windows 7 or Vista PC, uh, an Intel Core 2 Duo with at least 2.4 gigahertz per uh, clock speed on each each processor, an AMD Athlon 64-bit processor uh, that's a dual core, so 2.8 gigahertz or better, at least two gigabytes of RAM. Uh, an NVIDIA GeForce 2600 or AT ATI Radeon 4870 or better. For Mac, we have an OS X 10 uh, version of the OS, an Intel Core 2 Duo CPU or better, 2 gigabytes of RAM, NVIDIA GeForce GT 330M or Radeon HD 4670 for your graphics card. It seems like the requirements for Mac are a little bit higher. But that's typically because the clock speeds are a little bit lower and Macs don't tend to perform as as powerfully as a PC will on a given game. But I have seen this game run on a MacBook Air and I have seen this game run on a netbook. So that being said, let's, let's go ahead and look at some of these uh, settings in game and see, see what they'll do and talk about them a little bit more. So I'm going to pull up the game here, go to options, and first we're going to talk about sound. Now, there, the only thing that you're going to be able to, the only two things you're going to be able to affect are volume and hardware. You don't have to subtitle, you're not going to affect anything. I don't even know why that's not sound, it's technically visual, but... So, by disabling sound, you actually benefit your CPU quite a bit because your CPU won't have to process any of that information regarding the sound, any of the information whatsoever. So it should improve the quality of the gameplay. There won't be as much lag. Now for sound channels, there are four options. There's lowest 16-bit, medium 64-bit, and high 128-bit. Uh, keep in mind that uh, any time you're using the, any sound setting, it is going to put a little bit of strain on your CPU, meaning that 
the rest of your game is going to if if you're this is if you're like kind of like trying to just push the limits of your older computer the um, or even a newer computer and you're going into the higher settings uh, it's going to require more processing power so I would recommend using the 64-bit or medium settings for most computers out there that are going to be playing this game. Um, high, you're not really going to notice the difference unless you have really, really, really good speakers and or you're blasting the sound, one of the two, because it'll pick up all those kind of little, little sound grains and these other things. But the difference between lowest and low are really uh, not that noticeable. Um, so mediums where you're going to have like probably a good fair amount of uh, you're going to catch most of the sounds. So let's go over to video. This is really important. So there's three display modes, a full screen windowed and a full screen windowed mode. I'm currently in the full screen windowed mode. This means I can hit tab or alt tab or I can hit my windows key and very easily get to my desktop. This is, I would say, the most recommended thing. It seems to use less CPU power than the other things, at least running in Windows 7. If you're in a windowed mode, this will allow you to scale the game to a smaller little window, so you can have multiple windows open at the same time. So if you really want to, like, AFK farm and watch a movie or have Facebook open, you can have the windowed setting and then also have the full screen setting. For the full screen setting, of course, you're just only going to be able to see the game, and, but if you have a multiple monitor set up, this will lock the game into a single monitor screen. There are ways to, of course, to adjust this, but that is beyond the scope of this tutorial. So again, in conclusion, the full screen window setting is probably your best bet for quality. Now let's talk about game resolution. It's hard to edit the game resolution while we're in a full screen window mode, so let's switch over to a uh, full screen mode. So click full screen, and then come down here to the resolutions tab. Now typically we're going to float between three different resolutions. The 1024 by 768, the 1360 by 768, and the 920 by 1080p. These are representative of the three primary groups of computers that are going to be able to run this game. So low end, medium, some laptops, high end, desktops, and, and other computers. I recommend, if you want the best game, gameplay, probably 1360 by 768 is going to be your best bet could go a little bit higher. Some will be in between here and these range, but really you're going to have to play with it to determine what is going to work best for your PC. But look, also notice that there is an 800 by 600 uh, resolution showing that even though Blizzard has stated that there are minimum system requirements which require you to have 1024 by 768, your computer might be able to run this game even if the quality is a little bit lower than what Blizzard as recommended as the lowest possible settings. Setting your screen resolution is also going to determine the quality of your game overall, at least how it looks visually. I'm playing on a 24-inch uh, monitor and I'm running it 1020 by 1080. Let's go ahead and switch it down to the 1024 by 768 so you can see that. So I'm going to hit apply. Have it switch over. Now, the quality isn't all that different. It actually looks like uh, the quality of a PS2 game uh, that's come out maybe in the last couple years. So it's really not that bad. Um, but, it, and of course, if your computer is not really able to run the game, and you're getting a lot of lag as far as like character movement, you're, you cast a spell and it casts like a second later, lowering the resolution is definitely going to help your performance. The, uh, my, the best recommendation I have for this is to go into the starting area with a new character and then just play with your resolutions until you find something that's not going to give you visual uh, or gameplay lag. So I'm going to switch the resolution back up higher so I can show you some more things. Now Letterbox is going to uh, make sure that you're looking at the game in a widescreen setting. This really doesn't need to be checked unless you have a widescreen monitor um, or you have a, uh, I guess, kind of like a, a smaller square monitor and you absolutely want to watch the game or play the game in a widescreen setting. Um, if, you have, if you have a smaller monitor, though, that's not a widescreen monitor, 
leave this box unchecked. Vertical sync uh, is going to synchronize your frame rate in some uh, fraction of your monitor's r uh, refresh rate. So basically, if you're playing the game and you see what looks like a picture, the, your picture has been cut in half and then taped back together, but it's layered over itself so that you're missing part of the picture, you should probably check this box. Again, checking this box is going to reduce the overall gameplay, um, I guess kind of, you're going to get a little bit more lag and you might run into some other problems. This is going to be more work for your CPU. Now max foreground and max background FPS, really you only need to set these, th both of these settings at maximum 60 frames per second. The human eye can only see at 30 frames per second, so setting them at 60 frames per second will ensure that even if you've got adrenaline pumping, you'll be able to see all those uh, frames and tidbits. Calibrating gamma, gamma should really only be changed when you're trying to save battery power on a laptop or if your screen is already naturally dark. This won't really impact performance. It's just a setting that is going to change the brightness or other things of the game, and how you view the game. But it won't impact performance other than if you're on a laptop or some of these other things. Now, texture, there's now for quality settings, there's the texture quality, which is going to determine what kind of, what like paths, what buildings, what items, what characters, and what, um, kind of your loading screens look like. How sharp are the details on the a any given thing you see in the game? Uh, so looking from a distance, it's like, you know, how clear are those bricks on that wall or in that path? Uh, so I can, I can see two settings here, low and high. It appears that the low settings will typically correlate with a uh, resolution lower than 1400 by 1050, whereas high will work with anything higher than 920 by 1080. We don't see a huge difference between the low and the high. For shadow quality, again, shadows are going to be something that you're going to see through trees or uh, from mobs and these other things, but it is absolutely not necessary to have shadows on to be able to play this game. So if you really want to save some CPU power, turning shadows completely off is a good idea. The difference between low and medium shadow quality is much like the texture quality. There is not a big difference in the visual performance, but it is noticeable. Going from medium to high is where the biggest difference is, or low to high. Again, this is only recommended if you have a uh, higher end computer and can uh, run this setting without it affecting performance. I can run it on high. For physics settings, this is again like texture quality in that it's only going to affect how the game looks. If you change your physics settings from low to high, um, you're not going to, gameplay is not going to be hindered at all, but the ability for your game to play or work on your computer is going to be tasked that much harder. So running on a lower setting is probably recommended. For, for a computer that can't easily handle it. Clutter density is going to determine all those little grains of grass and, and particle effects that you see from spells and these other things. So the higher, setting, the higher you go in your settings, the more demanding it's going to be on your uh, processor and graphics card. Uh, the difference from medium to high is very noticeable, especially if you're running on a higher end system. From low to medium, the difference is negligible, so if you have to run it at load from on low or medium, it's highly recommended that you run it on low. For anti-lancing and low FX, um, low FX is basically going to help your frame rate, and but it is going to kind of reduce the quality of the visuals that you'll see. But again, of course, not having this checked is going to tax your system a whole lot more. For anti-aliasing, uh, this is basically when you have the full screen mode enabled, it softens the model edges and allows you to um, basically have a smoother visual appearance to every single object in the game. And other than that, there are no other settings you can change to improve performance in this game. Uh, I mean, of course, you can overclock and other things like that, which we'll cover in another tutorial. But 
This is how to run Diablo 3 on best settings on any given computer. Follow these easy steps and you too can run Diablo best settings for your theater. Thanks for watching.